Okay, so um, before our break, I, I was speaking with Kaya, uh, my daughter and associate, and um, that there were two choices in my mind as to tiptoeing. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Um, there were two choices as to where to focus now. One was to move more into the methodology of help right now, and the other was to describe my interview style. And she said, better the interview style because you use the interview style for the help right now anyway. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's fascinating. It doesn't need to be very long because, frankly, the interview methodology is not um, entirely unique. It's, it's well known in some circles. I find that it works extremely well. So it goes like this. Uh, I think most importantly is that the person you're working with has to experience your presence. I think that you really have to forget about everything else, certainly as best you can, and be present. Let them know they can feel that you are there. Because if you're not there, you know what it's like when you're working with somebody and it's important and you kind of feel like their mind is somewhere else or they're not really focusing or they're just doing like click, 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 next, next, number five, next. Um, so I think presence is critical to any, any method uh, where you seek to create a relationship and get information that you use. Uh, that might seem obvious, but um, I think if I'm going to describe it, especially on record, I say, you got to be there. You know, just be right there, and you know, like in, I mean, I've not, I've never been in it. I'd be useless. But if they say, like in show business, or especially in the live stage, the show must go on, or something like that. Whatever is going on in your life, it kind of has to go on pause so you can be there. So I call it presence. Um, the next thing is a, a belief that I have that influences the whole methodology, and the belief that I have is that given the opportunity, uh, each and every one of us is the best authority of ourselves. I know that we seek outside authority, outside advice, but I really trust that you know what's best for yourself. And you'll see that the methodology is built on that. So one is I'm with you, I'm present. And the other is I believe that you have the solutions to your problems, I believe you have the answers to your questions and I'm going to do my best to help you know what's best for yourself and do what's best for yourself. That, that's a perspective that I have that um, fits the methodology. So number one, presence. Number two, that the, the person has the solutions to their problems, they have the answers to their questions. And I'm here to help you see what you already know but maybe don't realize. Okay, more along the lines of methodology, I use different aspects of what's normally called active listening. Active listening is essentially when you, if the person initiates information, that makes it easy for you. If they don't initiate, then I have a way of initiating the information flow. Um, there are different ways of doing it. The one that I like to use most, and it's not most recently, but most, is a, this question. I, I sit with them and they, they can feel me and I already trust them to know. And I say, <clears throat> would you like more of something good or less of something bad? That's my opener. Not every time, but you know, if, if they don't just start talking and I want them to talk, I use that question to initiate them expressing something about themselves relative to the experience. Would you like more of something good or less of something bad? Susan, would you like more of something good or less of something bad? Right now. More of something good. Okay. Um, could you tell me what that would be? Chocolate. 
chocolate. Okay. And this is typical. Um, either she's being funny, and I agree, or evasive. Because what I'll say is, well, what is, what is stopping you from having more chocolate? I mean, if more chocolate would be good, yeah, that, and that was just, that was literally an off the cuff, just. Okay, just come back to it. My head. Would you like more of something good or less of something bad? Um, I'd like more of something good. Okay, what would that be? I would like more good food choices for me in my home. Okay, what's stopping you from having that? Um, because everybody in my household, well, there's only three of us, but everyone eats completely differently. Everybody eats completely differently? Pretty, yeah. I'm, I'm vegetarian. Uh -huh. My husband's meat and potatoes, and my daughter is uh -huh. cooking. <coughs> What's that like for you, to I have everybody eat differently? Time, time, a lot of time cooking. A lot of time cooking. And I, so I'm, I'm usually the, I, I get the least amount of energy put into my my food. Uh -huh. So well, I, I, you have you have you get the least amount of energy put into your food. Yes. Because I'm prepared. I make sure that they get fed. So they get well it. First. They get it first. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I would. Yeah, I would. I love good food, good healthy food. Sure. sure. Um, but I often shortchange myself because I just. Um, you shortchange yourself. Yeah. Just with food. Oh, no, 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 no. Like, what so, else? Um, well, uh, my husband drives the best car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I tend to take care of my daughter better than I take care uh -huh. of myself. So you take um, care of others better than yourself? Yeah. Uh, what's that feel like? Um... Honestly. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's it's really frustrating, mm -hmm. but also, uh, you know, a part of me really doesn't mind because. You know, what what more, about the other part that does <laughs> mind? Uh, just the other part of me gets just a little frustrated. A little frustrated, yeah. only a little. Oh, oh no, no, I get it's okay. Depending, um, yeah, sometimes I get really frustrated. Really frustrated. When's the last time that you felt really frustrated? about 15 minutes ago. Okay. All right, I'm going to stop there. Uh, thank you. Thank you for doing that. <clears throat> That's an example of initiating active listening with the question, would you like more of something good or less of something bad? Most, uh, most I people that are more idealized will tend to say, oh, I want more of something good. And the, the response to that is, what is stopping you from having it? Because actually, the truth is, 95% of the time, they want less of something bad. It's an ideal, like, it's a projection of what they want more good of, but the fact is, is that they have an, an experience at that time that is obstructive. And so what you saw was, she wants more of something good, and then I asked, what stops you from getting that? And then I initiated active listening. I don't know if you caught it, but I would listen to whatever the statement was. I would pick out the hot word, and I would feed it back, sometimes just by repeating it. And pausing, I would repeat it as a kind of an interrogative, like a question, and just look at her and pause. She would pause, and then she would say something more. And I'd listen to what she would say, and whatever word was hot, then I would mirror it back. It's called active listening, that I didn't project into it, I didn't give any idea, I didn't propose any solution, I trusted, and still do trust, that given a chance, that you would know the solution to the problem, you would have the answer to the question, and that would help me make a choice with the Neuralite 
that would help you right now. One of the principles is don't start where they need to go, start where they are, and help them go where they need to go. There's no sense in me trying to work with an idealized you that right now you're not. That's an abstraction. Mm -hmm. The brain has no direct experience of that future idealized. The brain is experiencing and knowing you right now. So, you know, like working with like in discriminatory thought or all, or all these kinds of things would be very interesting to go to, but it doesn't make any sense if 15 minutes ago you, you've experienced strong frustration. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're feeling creatures that think. To try to work with a thinking self or <coughs> disregard the feeling self is not efficient in terms of relating to the brain. Because the brain is always experiencing the inflow as either threat or no threat. I like it, it feels good, mmm, I don't know if I like it, could be bad, is bad, it's a threat, position, position, so this, this feeling state comes up into the cortex, goes through the limbic system, limbic network, into the cortex where you tell a story about your feelings. And sometimes the story is more accurate, Sometimes we tell ourselves a story to kind of make peace with the fact, and that's where a lot of idealization comes. That's why people will oftentimes say, oh, I want more of something good. I say, okay, what's stopping you? They say, oh, I want more, like from yesterday, I want more joy. Well, okay, what's stopping you? And, you know, it comes down, doom, 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 doom. I, uh, a few days ago, I was in L.A., and I was doing, like, tons of sessions, 15, 20 a day full interviews, the whole thing. And um, these are people as a group that are identified as a, you know, a group of conscious people working towards all kinds of positive change. And, um, you know, it starts off in a certain place and it would just oftentimes come down, of course, at the intimacy of one-on-one, -on -one, to, um, I hate my mother and I think I'm a bad person. And they started off very idealized with, oh, the more of something that I want good. But given the chance, usually in active listening, usually, usually, it takes about five exchanges before it strips down to getting close to the truth of the moment, the truth of the feeling. It doesn't take long. So I used, do you want more of something good? or le And by the way, thank you for doing that. Do you want more of something good or less of something bad? I use to kick it open. But if the person just starts, then you don't need the opener. You're like they open. Most people need, a, need an opener. But if they open up, then you just start to do the act of listening. And whatever hot word is in the sentence, you just feed it back. Either slightly modified with context or just the word and I usually pause, I tilt my head like a, you know, a cat, just kind of curious, and then you wait. Just wait. Usually it's not more than two or three seconds, boom, yeah. the next thing comes. Okay, listen, listen, boom, boom, boom. So, right, if we were going to do a Neurolite session right now for you, and you could, without knowing the fancy names, if you could have something to help you have less of a bad thing, what would you ask for? What, what could I give you? Um, you? You label the less thing as, as, as significant frustration. Yeah, I think... Less frustration... Um, more cl mm -hmm. Clarity, I guess. Clarity? I, I have memory. Just recall getting the words out of my mouth, mm -hmm. from my head, mm -hmm. um, and that's, again, that's really frustrating. That's really frustrating. Um, like the example that you gave earlier mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I would say the frustration, because I'm getting frustrated not being able to articulate what I want to say okay. to you. Okay, all right. Uh, so you start to see a, 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 common, a common theme emerging that actually <coughs> extends
further than help right now. If we were to do a long-term strategy, oftentimes you get the seed of a long-term strategy in the short-term help right now. You get, this, you get to see a vector, you get to see a, a brain-shaping strategy that would be purposeful. But you, you don't try to fix the brain towards its end goal. That's a mistake. First things first, and one thing leads to another. So short term can act just short term, because the experience itself, the cause was short term and transient. Fine. But oftentimes, the short term issue, the help right now, is some kind of aggravation or some kind of aspect of a long-term state. You know, the, uh, I gave the analogy, <coughs> is he with the patient or something? Um, no, I don't think so. Do you want me to go check him? That's why I'm here, to talk to him. <laughs> I know it's being recorded, but unless he's doing something important. Doctor? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, the, um, he is on a call with a patient. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's being recorded. But the, the interview style for short term is related to the interview style for long term. Because, you know, once the long term is launched, then the concept is that it isn't a straight line that ends, and the next time they come in, you start a new straight line that ends. The idea, hopefully, is that you have the interview, you have the actual session, you have the, the aftermath, the follow-up <coughs> discussion. Then they go off and do some things that are working towards that vector. Some things that either they propose for themselves, like I just called it a, a, a self-declared action strategy. So I would say to you, if we were to do this session of some choice towards this frustration thing, and I'm going to see you again next week. And I'll ask you honestly, is there anything that you could do that you think would work towards helping to have more clarity or experience less frustration? Small things. Yeah, I think personally keeping on my schedule a little tighter. Okay. And um, give me one more. It may sound spice. Being direct. To <coughs> everybody? Yeah. Okay. Because you're not so direct sometimes? Yeah. Okay. I think I, I Okay. This is what I would like this is what I propose. I would like you to just observe when you're not being direct. Don't take the risk yet. Okay? Don't, you can be indirect. But I'd like you to just, maybe not even as a neutral observer, just kind of a curious observer. I should clarify, it's not that I'm indirect. Uh -huh. That's my I just word. don't voice my... I, I, okay. I sometimes reserve... Yes. Saying something just because I don't want to make waves. <laughs> okay, I'd like you, this is my recommendation, as a neuroplastic reinforcement in the mental zone, I'd like you to just, if you can, be curious about that reaction and just mentally note it. Nobody knows that you're doing that. Just mentally note when it is that you do the thing you do. <coughs> so, you know, uh, as a practitioner, I would make a small notation. She comes back in next week, and I'd say, you know, what happened with that curious observer? You know, did you see a lot? You, you know, so an opener. She might come in and just start to boom it, but the attempt if it's longer term, or if it's like a multiple short term, try to make it circular. Try to pick it up where you left off.
so that when you, you pick up that circularity, the idea is it's not just a circle where you go round and round, it's actually a spiral mm -hmm. that is going up. A spiral that is going up. So that you think less that the solution to the problem, which is stopping you from having more of what you want, the good thing, is this magic flashy light sound thing. That, that the power <coughs> is yours. The power is yours. And this is your assistant. I'm your assistant. You're the driver. Right? And that's true, by the way. So, um, <laughs> okay, I described the interview style, and we did the demonstration. You can see it later on. Um, but, okay, uh, this is what I'd like. Um, I'd like you to explain to the doctor what we just did, what you observed. <laughs> okay. I don't know if this will pick up on camera, but it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Go ahead. So I missed a little bit of uh, Susan uh, voicing out her initial, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, but what I'm gathering is that Susan said that one of the major, you can look at the, he. You have to explain it to him. Obstacles for her is that she gets frustrated because she cannot, um, she cannot produce, she cannot uh, communicate what she really feels uh, to people directly. She can't quite get okay. the point Okay, I'm going to interrupt you. Uh, don't repeat to him the content. What was the dynamic? What was the style that we used, regardless of the content? Okay, so Garnet uh, employed uh, active listening mm -hmm. and... Uh, Do you recall the opening question? Do you want more of something good or less of something bad? Right. And I use that as an opener for, mm -hmm. to get the ball rolling. If a person it initiates with information right away, I don't need to ask that question. Mm -hmm. If they don't initiate, I use that question. It's a question that has no right or wrong answer. Mm -hmm. right, go ahead. Um, and so when Susan made her statements, he uh, kind of zoomed in on the hot words and uh, reflected back to her without judgment. And, uh, in, and without any suggestions, and just listened to her so she could express um, whether she wants more of something good or more of something... Less of something oh, bad. Or oh, less of something bad. And uh, Susan said, more of something good. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they dug down a little bit deeper, it turns out that what's the, the real obstacle is that you really that there's enough bad that's keep that's holding you back. So, in truth, you want less of something bad. Um, mm -hmm. I'll make a point of that Not because we can say it again. This is really important. In help right now, this is I'm describing the interview style for help right now. Basically, new relationships that have a potential relationship to long-term strategies too brain shaping, but we're talking about help right now. When people need help right now, that quite, I find the question really intriguing. Do you want more of something good or less of something bad? People that are tending to idealize or try to talk their way through the problem will tend to say, I want more of something good. Right? Because remember, the experience comes in through the limbic network, creates threat, no threat, and is a feeling state. And then that feeling state percolates up into the cortex where then you tell a story, you have thoughts that relate to the feeling state. And if a person's trying to talk themselves out of an uncomfortable thing, they'll kind of abstractly remove themselves and they'll idealize them, themselves. Oh, I want peace on earth, or all kinds of things that people say. So I always have the same response. If they say I want more of something good, I say, what's stopping you from having that? You know, I want more joy. Okay, me too. What's, what's stopping you from having more joy? If you want more joy, it's like if I want more of this smoothie, I do that. There's nothing stopping me except I'm not pausing in the, you know. So when they give this, I want more of something good, usually it's an idealization, it's an abstraction. It's an idea, it's a story they're telling themselves. Well, I mean, of course, everybody wants more of that. 
So what's stopping you? Then they say, well, this thing. And they may say very directly, or they may describe a circumstance, like you did. You know, the food, we're all eating different styles of food, and so on and so on. What you do is, if they keep telling a story, always, this is the act of listening. Whatever the statement is, find the hot word and feed it back. It can be as simple as me just saying, frustrated. And I do it with a little bit of an interrogative tone, then I just pause and look at them. And in active listening, as soon as that's recognized, the person, 99% of the time, responds. Or you can make a little bit of a sentence, you know, you feel frustrated, right? And because you said, I feel a little bit frustrated, and I said, a little bit? And you said, no, a lot, right? So what happens is the story begins to degrade away from a bunch of ideas into a feeling state. And then once you're in the feeling state, you just work with a couple of different, again, active listening. Don't project how <coughs> smart you are and analyze and say, oh, and then therefore it's this or that. No. Remember, presence number one, number two, the person is the best authority. Let them tell you what to do to help them. I say flat out, so what can I do to help you? And I wait. Why? Because I know that they know. Maybe they don't know that they know, but I know they know. And what will happen, this is for the help right now, within a very small number of exchanges using this technique, they will tell you clearly their current state of feeling. And then I will say, what can I give you? And they may repeat the same thing back exactly. Or like uh, yesterday, a woman over at People's Pharmacy, uh, Dolores, an older woman, cancer survivor, the whole thing. Blah, 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 blah. And I said, okay, now that you, I didn't say this, but now that you know that, <coughs> right, what can I do for you right now? And she said, just peace of mind. Okay. So I gave her mind tranquil on the spot, and it was the first deep state of relaxation, because she's a worrier. So, you know, this technique is not mine. I wish I was smart enough to have invented it. Active listening is quite an old psychological technique. You know, people that know it, they're typically described as the best conversationalists. And if you, if you had had a video at the restaurant table, all they did was reflect back to the person in active listening, and the person on, we'll call it the receiving end, if you know what I mean, would describe the other person as an incredible con conversationalist, even though most of all the talking was from the other person, <coughs> because of that, that thing. And you can say, it's not difficult, you can, you know, if you scan the words that they're saying, one will jump up, one or two, what I call the hot word, it kind of lights up or stands out, and if you don't know what to do with it, all you have to do is repeat it back. Frustrated? A little like interrogative, a little intonation. Frustrated? And usually, as I say, like a, like a kitty cat or something, I tilt my head. Like, hmm? And then you wait. So, in a nutshell, the interview process for help right now is presence, the belief they have the answer. If they don't begin to talk, my opener question, at least these days, for a while now, is like I'll say to you, would you like more of something good or less of something bad? Right now, if I could actually, if I really could just give it to you, right now, would you like more of something good or less of something bad? I definitely want something um, less of something bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sick, so, so okay. that's, a, that's a, an easy... You're sick? Yeah. Right now? Uh-huh. Wow. Want me to tell you more about what I'm I don't saying? know. No, I'm just, I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's an easy answer for me. Why? I'd like to get better. You know? Are you sick often? No, it's just this time. Just this time? Mm -hmm. What's it, What's it like this time? Um, When's the last time? I normally don't get sick, and uh -huh. so like, uh -huh. I just, I've been sick for weeks. Wow, weeks? Hard. Yeah. 
Weeks? Yeah. You've been sick for weeks? Yeah. It's something respiratory. So respiratory. Mm -hmm. Can you feel it right now? Oh, yeah. What's it, what's it feel like? I just have a lot of cough uh -huh. coming on and go, uh -huh. and so that's, that's frustrating and that makes life difficult. Difficult. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's difficult to talk to people, to uh -huh. talk to people on the phone, to take care of kids. The whole thing. The mm -hmm. whole thing. I have a lot of good. You have a lot of good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just a little less of bad. Just a, okay. And I'm on my way. So. And you're on your way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's unusual for you. What, what, what's it like to be sick when you're not normally sick? It's just frustrating. Frustrating. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It makes me angry. Angry? Uh, yeah. Uh, you you don't look like an angry person. No, it's just being sick of being sick. Being you know, sick it's of being sick. It's holding you back of uh -huh. um, doing things that you want to do. You know, there uh -huh. are lots of things I wanted to do. Are there lots of things you want to do? Uh, yes. And like you, you don't all the time? Uh, not all the time, but just to be productive, uh -huh. and just to kind of keep things going. And stay what, what does it feel like to not be productive? It's frustrating. Frustrating. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Uh huh. When you get frustrated, you you always feel angry, frustrated, or do you feel? No, not always. But right now. Um. Yeah, I'm just a. You know, I'm a doer, and uh -huh. I like to address things okay. and. I've been addressing this in many different ways, and it hasn't worked. And so, when there are no positive results, it's frustrating. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a. I think the underlining emotion of it is fear. Fear. Because you're feeling kind of like. Not your speak. The, that's not your. It's I am. Not you are. You say when when fear when you're feeling fear. Can you adjust that a little bit? I say think when deep I'm, down it's when I'm feeling fear, not your. Yeah, I think I'm feeling fear deep uh -huh. down. It's, uh -huh. it's that fear place what? of hopelessness, like oh, thinking. Hopeless. Um, well, thinking, you know, that you can fix things, and uh -huh. why is this respiratory thing still around after hopeless. I've tried every have, single advice? Have you thought. have you seen? I mean, honestly, have you have you experienced or even seen hopelessness before? Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is kind of the, the minor, you know, not, mm -hmm. not to the point where it's... I, I have no point. Life-changing. This is more just frustration and thinking, can I really not kick this cough? Um, okay, fear, mm -hmm. hopeless. I think fear is the underlining fear. feeling of it, okay. yeah. Hmm. If, if, I could, if I could help you right now, if I could give you a gift right now, Right now, honestly, mm -hmm. what what could what could I give you to help you right now? Uh, well, I think confidence. Confidence that I can kick it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could go further and mine down, but.